All right, I don't remember what I'm supposed to say, but I'm Brendan Roy, studio painter at Privateer Press. With me today is a special guest star, or his voice, Matt Getz, the Thanks, writing Matt. manager at Privateer Press. As well as a uh, special appearance, uh, voice-wise. It's, it's not special. I'm always here. You're always here. It's special to me. Day and night, 24 Welcome hours. to Get Your Paint On. It's Thursday. It, it is, is Thursday. Thursday. We can tell because tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> it's my favorite way of telling. So, Brendan, this is my first Get Your Paint On. Like, is what's it? the the SOP here? Um, so, I'm going to be trying to paint this guy as best as I can. Okay. With, uh, the angles that I'm situated in. Right. While hopefully the community interacts with us. Interacts um, with us. Nice. As well as we get to discuss, hopefully, some Crucible Guard lore. Hey. Questions fielded from the fans. Well, Doug threw this one it's to me because more. I have been doing most of the writing for the Crucible Guard thus far, so I can either tell you what's going on, or I can just make things up and lie completely do, mercilessly. We can do all Gets of Factor Lie. Gets Factor Lie. We're, we're making it official on Get Your Paint On. Sweet. So what is your favorite lie that you've created for the Crucible Guard, then? Uh, my favorite lie that I've created for the Crucible Guard is that they are good guys. Are they good guys? Well, I mean, it's kind I'm of already believing you. complex. <laughs> like, yes, you know, they're they're trying to take back lands and things that have been taken from them by a hostile enemy nation, but they're also like they've created trancers, right? So dispossessed refugees from the wars in Lael that they're just shooting up with alchemical serums that turn them into volatile and possibly explosive psychics. So I mean, you, you can't really take the moral high ground all the time when you're doing that. Someone named Roxy Getz says she's here for the bald guy with the beard and glasses. Oh, man, that is going to be a challenge in this room because... I just need to borrow some glasses. <laughs> so, um, if you haven't seen Brendan and myself side by side, we, we share fashion sense in many ways. It's one of our uniforms. Is shaving our head and growing a beard at yeah, Privateer Press. Yeah, at Privateer Press. And wearing a lot of black. Oh, yeah. Um, so it looks like you're painting up one of the assault troopers today, Brendan. I am. This is the leader. Okay. Um, you can tell he's the leader because leader he's holding model. his fist up. Oh, yeah. He's and you can see his face. Know where he's at on the battlefield and to hold their position until he tells them to charge. I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of the fiction that I, I was thinking of when I saw yeah. him, like... That's a real, like, hold fast fist that he's got up in the air. Roxy has specified that she's here for the one in the black hoodie. Oh, okay. That is also going to be a challenge around Privateer Press. <laughs> but right now in this room, it's just you. It is just me in this room. Um, so one thing about the, the medium-based Crucible Guard troopers that I thought was kind of fun is uh, their armor, at least in my opinion, and nobody's here to contradict me at the moment, uh, it's sort of retrofitted from like PPE, personal protective hazmat suits. Mm -hmm. So if they were working in one of the Crucible Guard labs or something, and there was uh, a containment breach or like maybe somebody mixed the, the bleach and the ammonia too much or something, yeah, they would send these guys in in these protective like heavy environment suits. And that would work equally well if there was like uh, some spill of hot iron because the crucible guard also makes war jacks through the, mm -hmm. the crucible arms foundry and stuff so just picture these guys as like a, a combination emergency response team and firefighter suit and that's sort of what they've slapped some armor plates on and retrofitted so the these guys can be sent into battle set that does the crucible guard have a safety officer a safety officer i mean I like osha I, like an osha man yeah. well they are kind of a union in a weird way. Uh, probably there are people in the Council of Masters that are involved with like defining safety procedures, but it's not going to show up on the Crucible Guard Force Org, right? Like, sure. It, it seems reasonable that there are safety-minded individuals because you've got crazy alchemists running around. Like when you have Dr. Morley just injecting mercenaries with whatever he feels like that day. Yeah, but that's for science. Well, everything's for science. Right, but within the Crucible Guard, that's like a legitimate, like... Even within the Crucible Guard, what Morley's doing is sort of... Suspect? Suspect, yeah. Okay. Like, they, they probably keep in, in the basement a lot, and <laughs> they all know what's going on with, with Morley, but 
you know, it's not advertised. Is there Gershield? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. I mean, anybody who looks as much like Peter Lorre as he does, <laughs> you have to be... It's a little circumspect, is what I'm saying. Nice. So, Brendan, you're just currently doing the highlights? Um, so, at this point, I've already begun painting up this unit, um, and I just brought the leader on here. Um, so, as you can see, I've done a lot of the teal um, that we have the scheme going on for our Crucible Guard army, mm -hmm. um, as you'll see as we continue to release pictures coming up. Um, and I'm working on one of the last highlight uh, layers, which is a mix of our new color coming up, Eldritch, with Menoth White Base and Frostbite as well. Mixed in, they're all mixed together to get a nice bright tone. Um, and I'll probably have another highlight layer after this, so I'm kind of just taking my time and seducing this model to the finish line. <laughs> right on. And then uh, Roxy asks, Brendan, what kind of wash or finish are you planning on using for the, uh, for the metallic bits that, that currently look unpainted, other uh, than the silver? Yeah, the silver has been base coated. Um, the cold steel, rather, the steel of our mm -hmm. metal. And I haven't done the, the gold depth. Uh, the only reason why I base coated already is so you could see the different elements a little bit better than it all just being this airbrushed on teal minus sure. what I'd already shaded. Um, they're, they're, uh, it's primarily going to be a great coat gray and then get some more work, some more blues um, and coal black um, shaded into these metals. Are you um, going to be using the, the new boiler black at all? Uh, probably a little bit, not necessarily for the metal, but definitely to give some kind of tinged areas here and there. Make it look like it's soot covered, because if they walk into uh, hazardous areas, who knows? What did you use for that more patinated, darker metal on his shoulders? Um, so that is going to be uh, like a very dark uh, brown is the other color. So the main colors are going to be the steel, the gold. The orange glows and vials and whatnot, and then our dark armor pad brown with... Uh, as well as the leathers, which are going to be obviously brown as well. Yeah, I've, I've got um, a sneak preview of the leathers, and they, they were looking choice right now. Yeah, painting up this brown was pretty much just how our method for painting black, starting with Thamar black and then adding, like, whole black and then adding some mm. Hammerfall khaki and then adding some underbelly to get there. Um, except for this, at the time, I just replaced most of those colors with browns. Um, so I started with Thamar black, mixed in some Battlefield, mixed in some more Battlefield to almost get almost battlefield straight out of the pot look um, and then mix in some beast hide and that kind of just was a quick way to get those colors right um and then break it apart so it's not all teal teal's cool it's awesome but it yeah all but it, it can be pretty powerful so I'm, I'm kind of curious about why this guy decided to flip up his faceplate in the middle of a battle like I, I don't know about you brendan but if i'm being shot at faceplate stays down i just know if i am the ultimate the ultimate hard guy. <laughs> hard guy. Yeah. That's... And someone ticks me off on the battlefield. And right. I'm wearing a mask. Right. Letting him know that I see him mm -hmm. by removing my helmet or flipping so up he the can, face so plate. He, look his he, enemy he understands eye. how angry I would be. At so that it's point. a dominance display, like a gorilla? I, I, yes. Okay. That's probably what it is. Like a there. gorilla. Like a gorilla. Yeah. yeah. No, I do like that the face plates articulated, though. Kind of so reminds me of a welding hood. It's hard to give orders when no one can hear you. That's true. That is true. Um, actually, I just wrote a bit... That's, dude, that's my favorite trope. Just the... <laughs> you need to get out of here! Um, I actually just wrote a short piece of fiction about an aspect of the Crucible Guard that addresses how they communicate orders when they can't hear one another. Is it through fist movement? Uh, sometimes, yes, but in this particular instance, even that is not satisfactory. And I was just playing with the idea that because they're the military of a bunch of alchemists, it's likely that they would have the, uh, the ability to perform quick field alchemy to create different colored smokes for signals. So uh, they, they probably have a versatile series of communication methods. Sure. sure. Um, Kern says hazmat suits also might fog up, question mark? Yeah, I mean... Get a breath of fresh air, like Nate said. They probably do the motorcycle thing where they rub mm -hmm. like glycerin on the inside of the lens and then buff it out so it doesn't fog off as much. Sure. Uh, we got a question over here. In terms of training, would this gentleman have started as a mercenary that signed on with Crucible Guard, a lab tech, low level alchemist, grad student, essentially, uh, that's being sent into battle now? Uh, the answer is basically all of those. So, one of the things we talk about in the upcoming Crucible Guard theme is that they lost a lot of their manpower mm -hmm. when Kador invaded and they had to basically evacuate their nation. So a lot of the old guard 
and in this case we're talking literal old guard um they probably have more senior ranks in the organization but in order to to man uh, to, to increase their manpower to move into a more open warfare situation they do rely on mercenary power sure because they want veteran soldiers they want people who they don't have to train how to fight they just need to train how to fight their way to use crucible arms specific gear well and they're also set up in a very mercenary area yeah exactly they're an ord right and there are tons of opportunities for mercenaries to work in ord uh but because of that you'll have people who were mercenaries that were brought in during that kind of recruitment push you'll have the old crucible guard members and some of the survivors of the order of the golden crucible who might have just been like like you said lab techs or like they're uh, their hazmat response team or something sure. who are now being trained in uh, more open warfare techniques and that, that's one thing i like about them sort of the adaptation of tools and technologies that would have been appropriate when they didn't really have to fight anybody they just had to worry about protecting themselves but now that they're kind of projecting strength mm -hmm. they they have to innovate new ways to to arm up and how to utilize their their current resources to create new weapons for the the forthcoming battles and then brendan question for you seth was asking uh how you might go about making jacks or other metallic you know types of things look like they have a thin layer of soot on them soot yeah um depending on the type of metal mm -hmm. um if you're trying to go like painted armor pad um you can do a really dark like umbral umber with Thamar black would work, like but a lot of black. You just don't want it to be straight black because that would be a little weird. And you could watch one of our two-brush blending, how to two-brush blend videos, and mm -hmm. you kind of just work it in there. And you can be really rough with it because mm -hmm. you don't care if that texture kind of, if it starts drying, you can work with that texture that sure. it will create. Um, if it is on a metal metal, um, you could use boiler black because then it will look like a stained, covered, mm -hmm. uh, dark, dark metal. Maybe even just thin um, it down a little bit with some armor wash. Yeah, you could just thin it down a little bit if you want to, or even add some more Thamar black. And, and since it's going to be metallic on another metallic, if you're if it's on a steel or something like that, it won't look off. You probably don't want to do that on an armor plate that's painted because then it's going to be that metallic shine potentially mm -hmm, will come mm -hmm. through with the boiler black since it's a semi-metallic, um, and it might not be quite as effective. So one of the things that I'm seeing on the model, and I'm trying to think back on the colored concept art, but I can't remember, is that a light on top of his helmet? Um, it's going to be, yeah, yeah. that's going to be a, um, I'm not sure if it's a, just a glow from mm -hmm. like orange or if it's going to be like a, a miner's helmet or right, like right. a beam out in front. Um, yeah. Cause so there's going to be a glow here on that. There's going to be a glow between these two bits. Although I think this is going to be gold. Right. Um, I'll have to check the color concept later. No, I, I dig that. Like, um, well actually I'm not even going to point it out cause I believe we have an image we're going to show you at some point which might happen. it'll go up later today okay yeah later today you'll see all of that stuff so look for it um yeah, i uh i'm sort of picturing but yeah that light there it's, uh, what it's was sweet. it the beginning of aliens when uh the the emergency team like rescues ellen ripley and they they just have those lights that are kind of cutting through the soot of the ship so mm -hmm. right now i'm just picturing the uh the, the guys wearing this gear like marching through the battlefield because the crucible guards throwing all sorts of chemical warfare out there all sorts of gas effects and clouds mm -hmm. so you just have these headlights kind of cutting beams through the fog that's 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 a cool look so good job nate uh concept uh, art nate fema yeah and as a disclaimer if you hear any weird noises coming from uh, us it's probably me trying to dance around this arm of this uh that's holding thing that's camera. holding up our camera oh they're not very well is what it is i mean it's holding up the camera well i'm not dancing around it very well I keep hitting it with my brushes. Follow up from what is that? Red Death M, Red Deathem, mm -hmm. um, asking about Marshal General Baldwin Gearhart. Um, it, the question is: Was he brought in uh, after the original fall of the Crucible Guard, or was he a part of the original? He was not part of the original. He was a, a mercenary warcaster, sort of similar to uh, some of our more famous Merc warcasters. Uh, he's from Signar, if I'm remembering correctly. And he's awesome because he just kind of loves his job. Like, there's there's something that I. He's that very. I, ha -ha. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Like he's you know he's Gearheart, adventuring gentleman. Yeah. If there was an yeah. explorers club of Signar, he would be a part of it, right? Yeah. So there's something that we put in Gearheart's background where 
on the eve of battle, sometimes he'll show up after having too much brandy or too much port. He, he's he's the only one not from the Scorn Empire that has drank basilisk milk. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Clog, a cup of basilisk milk. I'm feeling feisty this morning. But no, uh, he'll show up and he'll just have sketches of like, I want this gun. And the crucible mechanics are like, we don't know what this is. He's like, well, I want something that shoots up a concentrated beam of cold that will freeze the eyeballs of my opponents. Get it to me by morning. And then, you know, the mechanics have to struggle to make whatever nonsense machine Gearheart has come up with. And then well, Clog has to carry it. Yeah, and then Clog has to carry it. And I can see Gearheart, like, having maybe a dozen more of these guns that he just leaves in his command tent. <laughs> and he, he'll, he'll say, like, Clog, fetch me the one that lights people's hair on fire. And Clog's fishing around in that golf bag looking yes, for a gun. Sir. He doesn't have it. So just picture skinny little Clog having to hoof it back mm -hmm. to the command tent, digging through Gearheart's stuff to find his one gun that his uh, his boss desperately wants. <laughs> Damn it, Clog. I didn't ask for the one that shoots bees. <laughs> I said the one that makes people freeze. The bee gun would not be appropriate for this situation. Look at those gentlemen. They are completely inured to the sting of the apiarist. Like he's just he's a he's a silly fun character and I I like those I like those a lot. Now you have to ask yourself if he's lying, if this is one of the gets lies or actual truth. Oh man, you're gonna have to puzzle through all that. <laughs> but we're hoping it's the truth because that sounds pretty. It, bad. It's, it's in my head now. Yeah, no, the bee gun, the bee gun. Yes, I want some. Buckley's this time. They're an aggressive strain. Like, I don't know if he has any nobility, if he's, like, part of the peerage at all, but I sort of see him being a little ostentatious while still being kind of... Able able to drink brandy with, with, with his soldiers. Yeah, you know, boots up on the table, right? Mm -hmm. But always telling stories like, Well, I remember when we were invading the Shard Islands. They were coming from everywhere, and, well... Poor bastards never stood a chance. Clog, another cup for me. Like, you know, he's just one of those over-the-top, larger-than-life figures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he fits so well with this sort of... Um, likes to host. Yeah, exactly. Likes mm -hmm. to host. Probably likes a lot of red meat. But he fits so well with sort of the kind of uh, duality of the Crucible Guard. Because you have those dour, dour people like uh, Lucas de Moray, right? Mm -hmm, Who's mm -hmm. in alchemy junkie who's basically killed himself and his wife just on a long timeline and then you have people like Ira, uh, Captain Ira McKay mm -hmm. and you have... Is it Ira or Ira? Uh, pro I say Ira but I'm going to need to consult some some actual Gaelic speakers to to be able to figure out how it should be said because it's E-I-R-A, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But you, you have those people who seem like they're just kind of having more fun with it, like Come on, the Crucible Guard came up with the Rocket Man. Right. Well, and, well, and so one of the things I was pointing out when Dallas was painting the, the Rocket Man Ace last week. Right. Right. Is I when you look at that way. model, the it's the only model I've seen in the Iron Kingdoms that that looks like it's actually expressing joy. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Thor Steinhammer looks like he's having fun burning whatever he's about to burn. But there's a difference between, like, I'm having fun and I'm exuberant versus, like bliss yeah absolutely right well, she well, blast actually... shield up on uh durgan mad hammer there sure, oh Matt yeah sure. Blast shield up on mad hammer but and i think that speaks to sort of the new recruits that are coming into the crucible guard right like some... we get to play with what yeah exactly <laughs> and some of the people who are kind of on the the newer guard the young side mm -hmm. of it like athenor Locke and uh captain mckay and the uh the crucible guard ace right they probably don't have a lot of experience with warfare so, no, but but they they get jetpacks. They get. I mean, come on. They get <sighs> tanks. Jetpacks. Well, the the railless is as close to a tank as you're going to see, right? Right. And you know, crazy alchemical potions that do all kinds of maddening, yeah. crazy things. Well, and you know, I think that um, Gorman de Wolf has always kind of enjoyed his work, but over time, as they get into the the more realities of the the mud and blood of fighting Kador and Lael you might see some of that chipperness fade out as some of them experience, you know, firsthand what it's like to to just be locked in sure. continuous warfare. I don't think Gearheart's changing, though. 
yeah. think Gearheart just but really like, loves. But it. the people that like get picked for like the Rocket Man squads, yeah, right. They're like, wait, I get to fly and I don't have to deal with any like that blight stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so sign me up. Man, the, these things are strolling in opposite directions. Uh, we have a question. Is Eldritch a new P3 color? Yes. There you go. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, and uh, it should be available early fall. We might have it for pre-release at Lock and Load. Let's hope. And by might, Dallas said it's like 95% certain. Right. So get your tickets at pplockandload.com. All right. Speaking of upcoming... We've got another model hanging out just off camera that we're going to have to show off here soon. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, you you want me to pull it in. Is it the really big one or is it the small one? Okay, we have two. We have two. We'll get to those. We'll get to them. We'll get to those. (laughs) Any interesting questions over there? Uh, Or more voices you want, Matt? So Ironclad Future asks, does Privateer Press have aesthetic phases, in quotes? Hmm. Uh, For example, Kuzbel Guard has a lot of gas mask slash diver look, including with the jacks. Um, So should we expect to not see more Kadar Assault Commando types or Deep Sea Pirate stuff, or do these big aesthetic pushes have no real impact on other developments? Hmm. And if I'm understanding the question... Which... I, I'm going to... Well, I'm going to say do. intentionally, probably not. Unintentionally yep. yeah. happens all the time. Well, yeah, there, there's it's... certainly an aesthetic kind of library right. that people will go to uh, right. when they're developing stuff for a single faction, right? Right. Well, and it's a lot of it's dependent on where we have decided that the, that the Iron Kingdoms is at technology-wise. Sure, sure. Right? Or how some of the other races and cultures show off that kind of technology. Or magic. Mm, yeah. Right, Ma- magic so, throws a monkey wrench and everything, but like, absolutely, there there are certain things where it's just sort of a logical extension, right? So if you look at the Crucible Guard mechanics, they mm. have what looks like an oxyacetylene torch, sure, right? And that's not something we've depicted a lot of other mechanics having, but these are alchemist yeah, mechanics. Generally, right? mechanics have like either a hammer or a wrench. Well, sure, and in in the Iron Kingdoms, sure, right? That seems to be their their main way of interacting and repairing jacks on the field. But even even if that torch isn't a brand new development in the setting, mm-hmm. like it it's probably something that the Crucible Guard has made use of or the Order of the Golden Crucible has made use of for some time. It's just never been seen. It's how yet. they keep their beakers warm. Uh, the, who's the Bunsen of the IK man? Menoch. Menoch is not the Bunsen <laughs> of the IK. Oh. Oh, I'm mad at you. Fire. No. <laughs> Fire, yeah. But no, so just because it's the first time you're seeing something on a model doesn't need, so, mean it's brand new in the world, right? Sure. And sometimes it's it first, is brand it's new. It's just the first time we're seeing it in a combat combat application. Yeah. Um, but other times it is brand new. Like the rail list is a new thing. Right. It was developed within the lifetime of Captain McKay because mm-hmm. it was made by her father. Like, it, wait, she's going into battle? Yeah, put exactly. Her in, put her in a tank. <laughs> Surround her with as much metal and explosives as possible. I'm a good dad. <laughs> so instead of helicopter parenting, he's literally tank parenting. Yeah, he absolutely is. I love it. So Hashtag let, tank parent. Oh, here's a paint question. Oh. Takaroth asks, so let's say I want to paint a part as metallic black using the new boiler black. How would I highlight it and shade it to keep that black metallic look to the part I want this to look for? Well, um, I would start with boiler black. Um, and then you can shade down. Make sure you go darker. Um, so if it's for, black. Depending on, uh, well, you can add some Thamar to it. You can add uh, armor. Usually armor washes are really good because mm-hmm. it has that blue tone that, that you usually want in some sort of steel. Um, and you can add uh, Thamar black to that if you want to go really dark. If you like painting with your base color, then your wash, and then whatever highlighting you want to do. Um, but my recommendations for a super dark uh, black would be to, you know, have something that doesn't really go past what boiler black would be in, in um, sure. color um, until you go to highlight, and you can do really sharp, like, cold steel maybe, maybe even quicksilver, like tings, um, to really show off, like, so you, so you can make it pop without taking away from how dark it actually is. Um, which is no, a normal quality of metal anyways, um, when yeah. light is is present, no matter how dark it gets. 
you don't have those super high reflective tings, but you still want to keep the overall look um, within a certain spectrum. So. And then uh, Steve Hall was uh, curious how you got that leather. Yeah, there's that, a that lot look on that leather. leather for the leather. Oh, well, um, there are a couple tutorials that we might be doing that might have been filmed for uh, P3 videos presents. we might mm -hmm. might make. Um, and Those that might be soon. one of them. There's well. no might about it. It happened. Oh, it happened yeah. soon. All right. But can, yeah. can you briefly go over the um, To briefly go over it, uh, I started with Guncore Brown. Um, then I stippled uh, Ruxic Tan. Um, mm -hmm. And stippling is where you just take a brush. Dun, 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 and you just like, like it. you've already dry brushed it. So you already put it in the paint. You've already wiped it off. And this is for anyone that doesn't know. And then you just like slam it on your model like that. Um, and then you go, uh, then I went with Hammerfall Khaki. And then I just started shading it with like battlefield brown adding brown ink and it looks like just um, a lot of and a lot of and then yeah then some then some glazes like brown ink glaze like really thin and just built up the levers there and there so what and provides that kind of the glossiness the luminosity that you get on um there? well the, uh, how glossy it is is going to be your inks your inks okay. are going to like dry glossy so if the shinier it looks the more you know we probably use some inks um mm -hmm. in the recipe however like when we go over with our dull coat finish that should tone that down um substantially or completely and then it'll look flat and that'll look a lot better for our uh, metal especially since that texture is more of a um, less reflective type of leather anyway since mm -hmm. it's so textured so that will be um, better for us in the end so. alchemically treated makes it shiny well and you have to it's imagine possible. that most of their stuff has been dipped in some sort of like non-reactive chemicals to sure keep you from lighting on fire they, they and... like literally don't coat themselves yeah exactly but yeah. with the non-flammable stuff I, I mean if anybody in the ik is going to develop a rhino liner it's going to be the, <laughs> the golden, crucible guard. the golden crucible yeah um oh onion j how fares the northern crusade since the introduction of the crucible guard um it's sort of not in its best place right now. Stalling out a little bit. Yeah, stalling out a little bit is probably a good way to put it. But, I mean, there's still Protectorate up in um, northeastern Lale. And they are the elements of them are presently still in Thunderhead Fortress, which mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. the former headquarters of the Golden Crucible in general. And I suspect that the Golden Crucible wants their stuff back. Like, they want their clubhouse <laughs> So the it's where they keep their stuff. <laughs> it's where I keep my stuff. You can't have that. Anyway, um, so it's entirely <laughs> likely that there's going to be some some conflict between any remaining elements of the Protectorate, mm -hmm. the, the Northern Crusade, and the Crucible Guard. And honestly, like they probably have really nasty stuff hidden in there still. Oh yeah, like what's that? Oh, sorry, I was just saying hi to somebody on the chat. Yeah, they. Um, I didn't want to interrupt. Any, any kind of. It's, it's your show. You get to interrupt all yeah. you want, man. We are. I am listening, show. and I'm very interested. It is not my show. <laughs> Except visually, it your, is. Your name is on is is on the screen, dog. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> With Brendan Roy. That doesn't matter. Uh, name so is also Alec M. Luda <laughs> asks about the Northern Crusade at Thunderhead. Didn't Godless mention they were pulling forces back? They are, but that's not an instantaneous proposition. Mm -hmm. Right, they they moved a lot of forces up into that section of Lale, so there's probably still going to be people who are like, I don't know, shredding secret documents and stuff like that for a while before everybody clears out. Um, and then Eric Swinson, who has a really dope profile picture of the Nemo bust, uh, asks, nice. "Will the new colors be on sale at Lock and Load?" Uh, Ninety-five percent chance of that being yes. Uh, here's what I want to know, uh, Red Death M. Uh, how did the Crucible Guard uh, their jetpacks work? So it's a it's an interesting combination of basically the eye cake uh, equivalent of hydrogen peroxide and a fine silver mesh that, when pushed through at pressure, starts to separate and it produces something that is kind of a a lower heat, almost like alcohol style flame. Mm. Now. There are different uh, additives that are mixed in there to help stabilize it and keep it from detonating wildly, but you're still ultimately strapping something full of a flammable material onto your back, so it's not... To, to provide flight. To provide flight, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of thrust. Um, it's almost similar to the prototype SpaceX engines that they try to use with the mm -hmm. uh, fine silver mesh. But anyway, um, 
there are a number of other chemicals that the the rocket men can mix into their fuel to produce some unusual side effects that if you look at the rpg side of things are mm. explored a little more in depth um but in the tabletop like sure. flight by itself is pretty great the right. plus two speed from the command attachment is pretty great so right? you can you can strap on a jetpack yeah in which case you might explode uh, or catch on fire I, I... Some kind of bad chemical reaction that leads to a horrible burning death. Yeah, exactly. Right? The, or the or exact plummeting na- death. Right. Like the, the exact nature, not important. Sure. However, that I think is still preferable to someone like getting some blight on you and you having to grow horrible, weird, grotesque wings. Yeah. It's probably really painful and then losing all free will. I really think the Crucible Guard rocket men are having the most fun right. in war. Like, in, in the Iron Kingdoms, at least sure. right now, they're having the most fun. Oh, Seacat chimed in that, uh, that the speaking of the fortress, yeah. that, that place has been plundered twice. They're going to find all of Severius's spare staves in one of their favorite lab spaces. Dude, do you have any idea how many staves <laughs> Severius had? He, he had, like, the stave so of many. law and the stave of authority and the stave of truth. He probably had the stave of fellow feeling. Or stave of ostentation. Well, I mean, at one point, he had to have the stave of lazy Sundays. Right. I mean, just because... No pants day. Yeah, well, he's wearing a bathrobe. In it. Well, not a bathrobe, but he's wearing a robe anyway. He probably <laughs> doesn't have pants under there. But he encourages everyone else on that day to yeah, also... you know, to, to reflect. Mm. To think about... To recline. What, what, <laughs> to recline and reflect on Menoff, yeah. Yes. Roxy says, I make Everblight sound like a bad deal. I'm pretty sure losing all your free will and going through a painful transmutation sounds pretty bad. But, like, all your free will? What about Saren and Rias, man? I know they're special case, but they've got a little... Special case. Now, like, if I get to make, like, some kind of bargain? Oh, you get to bargain with a dragon? Because yeah. that goes so well. Hey, there's only one game <laughs> company that says you're not supposed to. <laughs> uh... Is there a novel approach to powering Crucible Guard jacks aside from the usual boiler? There's some alchemy going on. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, That's why they have that kind of orangey glow in the studio scheme. Yeah. Um, I think it was Black Dogs by uh, Arlie Byers where we showed Milo Boggs mm. uh, putting a alchemical additive to the coal to get it to burn faster and hotter. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they might be doing an equivalent of, of that. Now, my official standpoint is still Blight Makes Right, but yeah, because I, I love my Legion army, but uh, I, it still seems painful and inconvenient So versus they, Jetpack. Well, I mean, Jetpack is just the correct, the correct response in every right. situation. Like, what are we getting for lunch? Jetpack. <laughs> uh, Legit. So Nathan Dayton says bargaining with a dragon worked fine for Asphyxius. Yeah, but did it? <laughs> did it really? He was like... One of the earliest guys to jump on the, the Toric bandwagon, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And 1,600 years later, he had to cheat to become a Lich Lord? Like, did it really? Does not sound like it. It, it doesn't sound like it to me. And then he had to deal with the Negra and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. Which I still want to see that 80s sitcom. The 80s sitcom yeah, of, of him. Asphyxius and an Everett. Like, yeah. that's, that's all Doug's idea, man. It's great. I still want to see it. The golden girl style. Just no, more more, more like growing pains. Uh, okay. So here's an interesting one. Uh, I have a question about Kralix. Well, Kralix, the... Incubi. Pseudo, well, no, an Incubi is a war well, he's beast. a succubus, right? Yeah, he's he's like a succubus. He's sort of produced... Succubus this, adjacent. Yeah, he's succubus adjacent. Okay. Uh, in Incubus. succubus. Um, a mancubus, since, as shit calls mancubus, him. yeah. Okay. Uh, since they're made bonded to a warlock, who is he bonded to? And if he isn't, how is he made? So he was made in very much the same way as the succubi mm-hmm. are, but he wasn't made for the same purpose. So he wouldn't be bonded to a warlock. He's meant to be autonomously yeah, going out he, and wrecking fools. Sort of like uh, Elias, the, Elias uh, Gade. the, mm-hmm. the exemplar. Mm-hmm. He's sort of um, a a far-reaching scout for the Legion sure. that performs specific missions for him. So having him directly bonded to a specific warlock probably wouldn't work out that well. Yeah, I mean, for his own safety, if Lilith tells him to do something, 
probably going to do it. Yeah, well... And if Thagrosh comes in, overrules that, probably going to listen to that. Well, I mean, the, Lilith and Thagrosh both have Everblight kind of in their ears, so... Right. I don't think there's a lot of dissent <coughs> among the Warlocks most times. But despite that, despite not being directly bonded to a Warlock... I imagine that Kralix has a very like strong affinity for them. Sure. Like when he's around them, he gets a little bit more obsequious and just wants to please them, wants to do things to make them happy with him. Sure. So there's a little bit of that succubus side and by, to And by stuff. proxy, make Everblight exactly. happy. Exactly, yeah. I'm just paying so much attention right now. This is an official studio model this time, so... Mm -hmm. No, you're just taking your time with it. to not mess it up quite so much. I still have to make mistakes. Like, I'll have to clean up this little scratch. I mean, this glare you can see from the camera. Riker's Iron asks, uh, about the Warf Wolf Skinwalker Elixir stuff, was there ever other versions like bears, badgers? Not that we've ever said, but I love that idea conceptually. Yeah. Like, I love that there were some pot uh, potents or something. Mm -hmm. They were like, man, I really... I just feel like the honey badger is where we ought to be. And they just had very short-lived and unsuccessful projects creating. Well, yeah, because once people took it, they stopped caring. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> no but uh, <laughs> the the circle probably has sort of their own almost crucible guard-like uh, affinity for experimenting with aspects of Orboros. Seacat uh, <laughs> says that Kralix has a special smile that only the warlocks see. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I imagine there's a lot of abandoned projects among like lower ranking members of the circle. And maybe one of those was the warp bear or the warp badger or like a warp trout from one guy who was just really, really into the warp idea. Trout. I, but ultimately, if we're... Trout's the first one you went to? Okay, warp pike, whatever. Not sturgeon. Or... <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen like there's that one Shard Island Tharn tribe that... Uh, manifest the devourer spirit is more like a shark aspect. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that there's a little bit of wiggle room in there. And I know that Riker's Iron is a, a player of the role playing game and really enthusiastic about it. So my uh, my response to anybody, if you're running your own IK, your own Unleashed, is you do you, man. Do whatever you want. If you want there to be a special strain of warp bears. <laughs> People are already Go going into like warp sea otter, warp manatee, warp hedgehog. Bear. We've lost them. <laughs> we, oh, no. I'm, I apologize, Doug. I apologize. Red Death tried to say street shark confirmed for circle. Nope. No. Come on. Nope. You can't take anything I say seriously. Can we even say a little bit. like isn't that copyrighted street sharks? Well, which is why it yeah, won't street happen. sharks yeah. is yeah. copyrighted. So. Man, I would love to see a revival of that though. <laughs> Like, wouldn't that be jawsome? Oh, that would be so jawsome. Jesus. Like, why do they have surfboards? They were sharks. To make them scarier? <laughs> like, if you're out there, you're a normal dude. You've never encountered these guys, right? You're out there catching some waves or maybe relaxing on the beach, and you see a straight-up man shark. Yeah. On a surfboard. Yeah, no, that's going to be the first thing going through my mind. It's like, man, I was... I was a little concerned when I saw the nine-foot shark man, but he's on a surfboard. We, sh we should go home, honey. This beach <laughs> is it. no longer for us. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Time to go get us an ice cream cone and go home. <laughs> Roxy said she thought they had rollerblades. You would remember better than me. Like, I I just remember that they tore up a lot of streets. There was a lot of municipal damage caused right, by the street they, sharks. Right, because they do that weird swimming through the streets thing. Yeah. Okay, let's get back on actual <laughs> things that... Are there any upcoming Warlocks beasts that aren't a thanked slash dragon spawn? Unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Warp platypus? No. Warp platypus? <laughs> yeah, but the male warp platypus does have uh, venomous spurs. So, actually, dude, what about a warp spine ripper? Oh, dear God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, Brendan, as Warp you get these, uh, Warp these highlights finished, what will end up being the next step? Um, so, after I finish these highlights, um, it'll be a little bit longer because I just added oh, yeah. more, no, more, to do. more frostbite to my previous mix to kind of finish off the real um, tingy, like real high tings on, on this. Um, and after that, it's going to be, I already base coated the metal, and then it's just going to be doing all this crazy amount of metal that we're going to have on here. Sweet. 
So. so while we wait for that layer to dry, why don't we show off that that, oh, yeah. that little lady hanging out over there? We can do that. You want me to move this aside so it's Let's easier? Pop to... that off real fast. Yeah, we can do that. Because that'll come off the top pretty yeah. easy. Oh, I would leave that there. No, I'm moving it too late. Too late. <laughs> Mayhem. So as people are probably aware, today is the last day to subscribe at mini-crate.com to make sure you get the Alton Van Helsing model. But starting to model, tomorrow, if you subscribe or tomorrow. remain a subscriber to model uh, tomorrow, uh, you will be getting the Runeball Wizard, which is based off the Gun Mage Captain Adept. And it is dope. Did you say rune ball wizard? Rune ball wizard. Okay. She sure shoots a mean rune ball. Interesting. I w like a mene ball. Right. It's a, it's a little conical shape. No, I, I know it's a pinball wizard. Yes. And then it's yesterday, cool. the oh, latest yeah. Black Anchor Heavy Industries model uh, became available for pre-order. The Manowar uh, Siege Slash Assault Chariot, because it is a multi-kit, meaning that you can build one or the other. Mm-hmm. So it comes with everything you need to either build the Siege Chariot or the Assault Chariot. And Brendan is very slowly bringing that up onto the wait, camera. Wait, wait, wait. They're like coming off like this. <laughs> Gustav Holst is right, a copywriter, right? Let me hear this. Oh, there yeah. we go. There we go. And this was painted Man. up by the other studio painter, Jordan So Lamb. that is the Siege Chariot. You can tell because it's got the, yeah. the giant... Uh, heavy gun. Heavy gun there. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the Assault Chariot has kind of the minigun looking, looking yeah. action. The barrage gun. And does not have the, uh, the smoke launchers like this one does. It's, it's so huge you can't get the whole thing in focus at the same time. Right? Oh, of course not. not so if you can. hold that stationary for just a second, I'm going to actually... Play with that very, very, very briefly. All right. So that's not stationary, does This is painter hand. This is painter hand. Kit. It looks like it's riding on the ocean, Brendan. Hey. There we go. Nailed it. So I love that it has those articulating, like, legs at the back to reinforce everything. Yeah. So it can drop those. And then basically when it fires that gigantic gun, yeah. it's not going to go flying backwards because you're yeah. on wheels. Well, do you imagine those horses are pissed off at him every time he shoots it because it like yanks him back? Well, so the thing is, is they can probably like when they drop the, uh, the, the supports, mm -hmm. they can probably like lead the horses slightly away, right? Leave them, leave them hooked up, but you know, take them up there. Yeah. But let's be honest, those man of war are going to be firing that thing on the move constantly. Yeah, and they're very right. nice not to shield the ears of these horses. No, those horses are super deaf. Well, they, well, they, they put wax in the ears. No, it they doesn't matter. How you, look at the bore of that gun. Iron Kingdoms. Well, we Alchemically treated wax. Al 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 alchemically it's one of the things wax. they stole from the Golden Crucible. The, those horses are deaf, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a stable somewhere so, in northern Cador just full of deaf horses. Those, those horses are, are, are named <laughs> Tinnitus and... Uh, <laughs> so is there it. like an equine humane society that just tries to free all the deaf horses? In Cador? Oh it, man, there's like... A, probably not in Cador. A, there's a Bratia, just like a bunch of Kyozzi <laughs> gangsters that are like... Like the Humane Society, breaking in and freeing yeah. all these Carpathian destriers. <laughs> no, so it, so in 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 Kator, they just give them a medal. Also, by the way, just this is not painted with Eldritch Metal White Base and no. Frostbite, so no. ignore that. No, that uses the more traditional uh, Kator scheme that we that we use for just about. What did you just say? Kator. There's even a pronunciation guide I in the old books. Kador. Yeah, that's dope. All right, but yep, you can pre-order that now through, uh, I believe, May seventh. Actually, bring those wheels back for a second, Brendan. Yeah. So, it's great that they actually, in the concept art department, considered this. Because that thing would be heavy as hell. Mm -hmm. So, all of those articulating bits around the wheels help to uh, distribute the weight so it doesn't just, like, press down into the soil of the battlefield. And it's just, like, that level of consideration that I really dig. Yeah. I wonder who concepted that. I wonder who concepted that and whether or not he's lurking somewhere in our chat. Probably. You can go ahead and put that where it was comfortable. Yeah. I will make the focus happen for you. That, Whoa, that's, that's too way close. too close. Never. Because too close, in my bro. personal space. Too close, bro. 
That's, that's one what they glare personal space. For. Okay. Two personal space. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Just follow him with the focus. Man, sure. he has so many right. canisters strapped to him. So many. And yet he's still flipping that mask up. Well, like, like we said before, there, there's multiple decent reasons for why you might do that. Yeah, sure. One, so your com compatriots can hear you, right? Two, in case you ate Taco Bell yeah. <laughs> and need a, need a break from stewing in your own juices. Wow. <laughs> why do that? Why go there? So you guys can see this. Whew. That's the color palette I'm using. Not sure right. if you can see it. Microphone but. volume up, please. I might just be talking quietly. If it's he does. Me. Brendan, Brendan goes kind of all over the place. He's a soft talker, yeah. but his words carry great weight. Um, yeah. Thank no. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's, it's better than the nonsense rambling that we're doing over here. Yeah. You're actually telling people about techniques and how just to get answering this, questions. this studio look. Man, I really like the fall off on the, uh, the leading <laughs> knee. Mm -hmm. Like how the color just shifts from that. Uh, less saturated to more saturated in the shadows. It's, it's super cool. Well, we will be showing you how to paint in this particular teal scheme um, in a video coming up. Excellent. Um, it'll be a little ways, but it's look forward. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Alex Luda says, I'm thinking about the pressure waves of the Siege Chariot's heavy gun and how it affects the horse's, the horse's brains. Not well. No. My, my guarantee is that those... I think those horses get one engagement. Uh, yeah. And if, and if they survive, they're like... They're, they're Kadoran... Yeah, Kadoran heroes. Well, I imagine that they're also probably used to train um, the uh, Man of War on horses. I can't think of their name right now. They're Man of War with giant axes on horses. Yep. Why can I not remember their name? It's killing me. Man of Horses. You're a writer? Uh, but yeah, they probably use them. By the way, this is a first. Gets has never, ever, ever forgotten something. And he always has more information than you could ever possibly imagine about every subject ever. I forget a lot of things. My but childhood. Right here. Is right recorded here. Recorded proof. It's the Drakhoon. The Man of War Drakhoon. Took you too long. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> could have popped up a chat I, I just, and just read it. I, I beat <laughs> John looking it up on the website, and that's all that matters to me. All right. It's the little things. Oh, Nate says, I think the Man of War Chariot is up for pre-order. I think it that's is, true. It is 100% true. So if you go to store.privateerpress.com right now, click on that little Bahi logo or just look at the front page, you can do that. And you get a sweet freak trucker hat. Oh, uh, somebody just asked, will there be lots of IKRPG content for the Crucible Guard as much as I can manage? There, w there will definitely be some. And yeah. the, the, the preview bits I have seen so far make me very excited. Yeah. Um, I will say that not everything that's in the new Crucible Guard army mm. is really necessary to be something new in uh, the IK RPG. Right, because you can, you can make that a thing with a number of the different careers. Yeah, and, like and we're items. looking at one of them right here, yeah. right? If you play a Man of War soldier career with, with appropriate equipment, you basically have the Assault Trooper or the Shock yep. Trooper or whatever. Yep. Cause, so, yeah, because, I mean, a lot of the Crucible Guard... IK RPG stuff would just be stuff, literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's equipment, it's maybe certain, you know, certain training, but most of it is already reflected in existing careers. But there's a couple of special cases. Yeah, there are a couple of special cases, absolutely. I mean, we've already talked about how the Rocket Man is a career. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked mm -hmm. about that like two weeks ago. No, no, you just spoiled it. No, 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 we talked about it on the... Uh, the live stream. You're right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yes. that that expresses something that just we, we couldn't do normally. You can't just say, like, all right, you're a soldier slap on a jetpack, and that accurately represents no, what the No, because, again, it's, it's something that requires a certain kind of training. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's minimal, even if it's haphazard, it's still something more than just, here, Billy, have a jetpack. Oh, well, I mean, there were probably some preliminary tests well, that's that were like starts. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And there are probably a lot of long streaks of used to be Billy all over the training field. <laughs> like Billy board. Crudup, wasn't he? The... No, no. Who was the Rocketeer? Who was who was the Rocketeer? Yeah. The actor? Yeah, the actor. I don't remember. Some guy. Oh, Valve Die. He was an all star. You don't need to know his name to know that. Wasn't 
really nice day. Anyway, the in the way Smash Mouth was in, in all Oh, wow. Eat the eggs. <laughs> Smash Mouth. You, you still need to eat those Smash eggs. Smash Mouth like that. All right. Um... <laughs> okay. I just like that Timothy Dalton <laughs> played a, a secret Nazi in The Rocketeer. He was James Bond, man. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any more questions about what's going on yes, here? Please ask questions. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Aardvark Pepper asked if that entry, infantry model is finished. I feel that maybe an inkwell should bring out the textures over the silver parts. We'll get there. Yeah. yeah. He's he, This is a studio model. So the, instead of like yeah. where Dallas might normally get a couple of, uh, or Brendan might get a couple of these layers done in you know a few minutes, mm -hmm. this one requires much more attention to detail because this is, you know, what we will use to show off our stuff at these and to be completely honest it's very like difficult that. painting with this per current setup that I'm working with that I you guys aren't able to see I doubt it because uh, as we've talked about before with Dallas and Brendan this, so this, this camera are. is like right up in his grill yeah yeah Billy Campbell mm -hmm. not Billy Crudup but it was a Billy it was it a was. Billy alright and Nailed Billy it. Crudup is the rocketeer though That'd be weird. When he was younger, would it be? All right. I can't believe you're you're trolling the uh, <laughs> the Rocketeer IMDb page right now. I had to check something. Six point four. I'm assuming out of five stars. Six point four out of five. <laughs> yeah. No lie, like I genuinely love that movie. I'm with you, man. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we have another thing to bond about. Yeah. All right, do we have any? Let's see. If Billy doesn't explode, he's a rocket man. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nicely done. What are the little ball vents on the backpack? Um, what we got? Oh, the little circular vents in the back there? Uh, that would yep. be, uh, I think if Nate is still in the, the uh, chat, he might be able yes. to answer that. Yeah. I imagine they're for venting things. So Nate actually already answered that. He said, uh, Seth, I envision those as filtered air intakes. Oh, intakes. So not vents. Mm -hmm. So in theory, he could leave that mask down and still get a breath of fresh air. Sure. Does he use like activated charcoal to... To filter out like heavy particulates, That's probably the level of filter technology they probably have. I imagine. Yeah. Like yeah. I imagine, like it's like that in cheesecloth. It's better than cotton batting. Right. Yeah. But Lale, so cheesecloth. So, uh, <laughs> Luck God eighty four. I have seen Steam Boy. I actually watched it in theaters when it came to Seattle, um, and it's aesthetically kind of interesting in comparison to the Crucible Guard Rocketman. But I will say, at least from the writing side, there's no direct translation of things. What What are you doing over there? Uh, refreshing. Oh, you're refreshing. Okay. Because like half of the comments just vanished suddenly. They'll be back. refreshing this particular uh setup doesn't so, like having the internet running at the same time oh well, i got well. it i got it so one thing that i really like we were commenting earlier about the uh little steering wheel on his belt um mm -hmm. and there were there were a number of jokes made but uh. um i think like you had mentioned that was to kind of tighten down well yeah because i mean it's, the so he's got to put that stuff on you know, like the leathers help to help protect like the seams and joints in his in his mm -hmm. armor mm -hmm. right and you know dust and various other alchemical you know awfulness and it just seems that like in order to actually really cinch a belt around that you would need some torsion well i i also see it as being like uh, indicative of this entire thing being pressurized somewhat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like pos possibly even has positive pressure so if something does get in it can can blow it Vented. back out yep. yeah um but that that belt being able to lock that down and kind of ratchet it into the ideal place that means that they could theoretically have like well, one and a half, two you wouldn't want it there. on your hip because no. as you're like swinging weapons around and stuff, you might accidentally, you know, bang it. So it's actually in a good reachable spot. I, right? I can see a couple of Winter Guard performing a desperation maneuver trying to get at that wheel, though. 
Like sure. if, if a dragon's breath rocket lands nearby and they're choking to death on whatever nastiness is in there, just, you know, it, it's a last middle finger to this guy with a thermal hammer about to beat you to death. You just <laughs> spin that thing the other way as hard as you can. Sure. Justin suggested ground up cricks used as a filter, to which I say, Bleh. when we say ground up cricks, we're we saying ground up necrotite or like ground up crixians. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> Justin, what what are you saying? Is it ground up crixians or necrotite that's used as a filter? Because those are both terrible. Uh, Hibernia scholar says, does the armor enhance strength or does it support its own weight? Like, like it definitely supports its own weight. There's probably like a a substructure mm -hmm. that is inside that thing that allows well, them to bear all that weight. Yeah. But they're also going to be using the strongest dudes they can for, for these jobs. Oh, absolutely. Like the guys who used to pull the, the big crucibles on the ceiling and pour molten iron all over. Like those are the kind of people you want strapping this armor on. If you're a blacksmith for the golden crucible. Yeah. Well, this actually, is where you go. The weapon they have there, the thermal hammer. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's... It's sort of, you know, a, a violent response to the ice maul of the man of war. Sure. But thinking about what role it served prior, it probably was used for shaping armor plating in larger war jackals. So mm -hmm. something that made the the metal more malleable while shaping it simultaneously. It's kind of an efficiency based system. It's actually uh, powered by the exothermic reaction of alchemical components inside it that floods down into a heat sink of metal in the hammer head. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it has fuel in there to keep it going. Um, well, and you can see some, some you know, things indicative of that looking at the the bottom of the hilt. Yeah, exactly. Because there's some kind of pressurized canister or something going on. So Nathan Howard suggests that there are probably some performance-enhancing drugs. Oh, yeah, there's potions. Potions? Potions. <laughs> Dog, they're not called potions. What are you talking about? Alchemical juice boxes. They're serums or alchemical concoctions, but not potions. Like, they're not floating around in these round bottles. Sometimes they are. Ignore those times. Like, <laughs> just ignore those times. Uh, I'm, I'm not ignoring. They're, they're in a variety of lab glass. <laughs> I'm trying to get a zoom in for the textured leathers. Oh, oh yeah, let yeah. Me, let me People are curious about that. that. So no, they are not breathing Mechanothrol's ground fine like coffee. Just one moment. I said this. What do, you you, you got to stop moving around, dog. Always complaining. And that leather, that leather. I can back it up some there. there we go. Yeah. All right. So it looks and that's like what you're talking about with like the you know like some of the texture sticks around mm -hmm. when you're oh, using yeah. glazes and washes mm -hmm. and yeah. whatnot. And see all those like little there's nothing too fancy um, but that texture actually makes a really big difference in the realistic look of it mm -hmm. and, it's, and it highlights one of the uh really dynamic things you can do with your brush blending because you can base coat with multiple colors which is basically what this is you know gun core brown then stippled mm -hmm. um with rucksack then stippled with hammerfall um and then it was just shaded down using two brush blending it allowed you to blend that those uh those those colors into it um, without ever having to do any highlighting, essentially, um, and just using more shades um, and some glazes oh, was able that, to pull this off. Can so. you show off the logo on his oh, yeah, right yeah, shoulder yeah. pad real quick? Yeah, so, so go ahead and just I knock everything off. I can just take them off, right? No, just right. Too late. I do what I want. <laughs> so I am, right. I'm so happy to see that the, uh, the original kind of logo for the Order of the Golden Crucible has been cleaned up and updated mm -hmm. and and done there so you got definitely has and this was quickly burst. base coded yeah. this is going to be gold i mean it's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. silver logo well um, it's not the order of a silver crucible it could be it could i mean what if they're just like I do what I the want. knockoff <laughs> brand the order of the silver crucible yeah. started showing up just like down yeah. the street well they're, they're the the second wave the second wave <laughs> so as we as we get ready to to shut down to head towards lunch yes. and all that other kind of good stuff, uh, what what are going to be the next steps for this as a studio? Um, well, for this at this point, it's going to be some dark lining and cleanup mm -hmm. where I made mistakes. Like I'll show you one right there. You can see it on the leg. Like right, I'm looking at the. There you go. 
that yep. needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'll be doing the all the metals, which is going to be you know the silver, um, steel, and then the gold. And that'll be pretty much it. There'll be some glow as well, some orange glow all over. Um, and hopefully they'll be done later today, tomorrow morning. Nice. Woo -woo. I'm and super looking forward to it. And, and you guys will have to wait a while before uh, you see Off them. to photography and then... Off to photography and then all the boxes and, kind of and all the yep. other stuff that happens. So, yep. yeah. Um, so, yep, we are wrapping up here. There's a, a lot of streaming coming, I believe. From Kingdom Con, is that correct? Uh, so there's there's no official streaming coming from Kingdom Con, yeah. but if I know Dallas, he will gorilla your paint on at some point mm -hmm. while he's at the show, if not multiple times, uh, because I was wise and gave him access to our Facebook page, nice. uh, so he can do that there. Um, there's also plenty of other events going on today. It's the first day of Kingdom Con, so make sure to check out the store a little later today for any of the exclusives that you might want to be hunting from past shows. Um, and then, of course, uh, today is your last day, as I was saying, to get uh, Alton Van Helsing. It is also the first day that you, or second day now, technically, that you can pick up the uh, Man of War Siege slash Assault Chariot. Nice. Awesome. And I don't then, have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then, of course, join us next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time for Weekly Rumble on Tuesdays, where we're going to play some games. Uh, sometimes it's War Machine Horde, sometimes it's Company of Iron, sometimes it's No Quarter Games various things in the privateer press line then wednesday is your developer hangout get to hang out with will pagani oz some combination thereof learn about everything that's coming up stuff. do some wrap-ups of different development topics and then of course thursdays get your paint on yeah with, thanks for joining us yeah brendan will yeah and the right now the forgetful matt get <laughs> forgetful <laughs> because i forgot the dracoon it only takes one time buddy matt forgetful oh god Oh, uh, that's no. hashtag forgetsful. All right. Uh, I'm going to live with <laughs> If that you love for us, please, hashtag forgetsful. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. If there's anything that you'd like to see, let us know in the comments, and we will see you next time.